Now, live from Whitney Media, 1460 WVOX, the Greenberg Report, with Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. You can join in the conversation at 914-636-0110. Now, on 1460 WVOX, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good morning, I'm Paul Feiner, I'm the Greenberg Town Supervisor, and over the years I've met a lot of moms who think their kids are terrific. Really smart, uh, future Nobel Prize winners, our presidents, actresses, actors, uh, <laughs> Academy Award winners. And you go to these events and they're always bragging about their sons or daughters. So today we have somebody who deserves to be proud of uh, their son. Um, the guest is uh, Kay Semenza and her son, uh, Dr. Greg Semenza, won the Nobel Prize uh, this past uh, year, just last year. So um Thank you very much um, uh, for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And I thought what we would do today is um, talk a little bit about uh, what it takes to be the mom of a Nobel Prize winner <laughs> and, um, and you know, how you prepared your son for, for the prize and also um, a little bit about, about yourself and some advice for other parents who want to do the same thing you did. Uh, so maybe you just could start by telling us um, a little bit about your son. My son. Uh, well, my son, I think I realized how bright he was. Of course, he was the first, so it's hard to tell. Um, when he was in third grade and at night, his fellow students would be calling him up for help with the math. So I figured, oh, he must be the brightest one in the class. And... Uh, it just increased. He got very interested in science. As he mentioned many times, his uh, high school science teacher was the one that really stirred his interest in science. And, and what did he win the Nobel Prize for? He won the prize for um, physiology or medicine. That's what it was called. But he, he won the prize specifically for uh, his studies of oxygen in the blood. And he found something which he called HIF, hypoxia-inducing factor, which uh, regulates the oxygen in the blood. And this is very important for many diseases, especially cancer. Uh, How was he nominated for the Nobel Prize? You know, know, I don't know that. He's he's been to Sweden many times. As um, uh, I saw one interview the day he was um, awarded the prize, of, of a man in Sweden, and he said uh, that he knew all the three um, recipients. Wow. And so he has been there. And But I don't know about nomination. I don't know how that works. Had he talked to you over the years saying, I think I have a chance of eventually winning the Nobel Prize? No. The only thing, he had won so many prizes. We were in Toronto. He won the highest award there, uh, Canada's highest award, for uh, biomedical research and we were having dinner and he said to me um, a lot of the scientists you know talk about other prizes the Nobel he said and this is him I just want to get back to the work that I love so the Nobel Prize is just an asterisk yes <laughs> yes <laughs> that's that's exciting I guess he loves the job he does he says that if you see his interviews he says I just love it I'm not going to retire um, I love getting to work every day. Wow. And <laughs> when, when he won the Nobel Prize, um, what was your initial reaction? Well, <laughs> I had said to him, because I knew that was next, he got all the awards. And I said, now, when you win the Nobel Prize, I don't want to hear about it on the radio or TV. You better call me. So he called me at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't answer the phone. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I had gotten... And I have to tell him, I got another one, some calls early in the morning like that from someone who didn't speak English. And I thought that person was calling again. All I had to do was look at the phone, (laughs) see his name. But, of course, I was asleep, so I didn't think of it. You know, sometimes when you're a celebrity mother, you're treated differently in the community. Do people uh, look at you differently, like you know, people who didn't talk to you a year ago, now they want to be your best friend? Oh, yes, definitely. And people I hadn't heard from in years, you know, uh, want to take me out to dinner and all. I think they want to say, oh, my friend 
son won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> you know, that's great. You know, and uh, we have to take a break and uh, we'll be back with Kay uh, Semenza um, and her son, Dr. Greg Semenza, uh, recently won the Nobel Prize. And we're going to learn about um, um, her experiences um, and um, also uh, Stockholm and some <laughs> advice for other mothers. I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor. Now, back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor, and we have a really interesting uh, guest uh, today. Kay Semenza uh, is a resident of uh, Tarrytown, and her son, Dr. Greg Semenza, won the Nobel um, Prize this year. And um, I'm sort of wondering, after your son won the Nobel Prize, um, did you notice a change in his personality do you become a little bit more arrogant or? No, 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 he hadn't changed a bit. Oh, wow. And he won't. <laughs> um, you, so you'll sometimes, if it, if it goes to his head, you'll put him down. <laughs> well, he lives in Baltimore, in Maryland, and I don't see him that often. Oh, wow. Um, uh, when you, when, uh, now, did you go to Stockholm? Oh, yes, I did, of course. And could you tell us about that experience? Oh, it was wonderful. It was um, every day we had some something to do, um, either go into a museum or um, we had a, a concert of the Royal uh, Spanish, uh, Swedish Orchestra. Um, and then the big thing was the ceremony and then the banquet. And uh, that was, I, I felt like I was in a movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Did, did, uh, did you, uh, um, did they uh, like have somebody from the Nobel Committee take you around or like when you went to museums where you were on your own? Oh, no. no uh, we went by bus usually. Um, now, Greg had his, his own car, a brand new Volvo for a week and a driver and a, an attache who went with him wherever he went. Now, the Nobel, so, the Nobel Prize comes with, with money also, right? That's right. So uh-huh. how much uh, money did he make from that? I think he... he uh, received uh, like uh, three hundred and ten thousand. Wow! But he had to pay for a lot there. <laughs> he had to pay for the hotel. I heard he had to oh, pay really? for the buses. Yes, different things. Oh wow! So <laughs> so it's like who's who where you have to pay for the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and then one night he had a, a dinner. So many people from Johns Hopkins came that um, he had a dinner for forty people. And out, about 10 of us were family, but the rest were people who didn't even go to the ceremony because he only had 14 tickets. Oh, wow. But they came instead. And Greg uh, pointed out each person and told how he was involved with them, how he knew them, because he's been <clears throat> at Johns Hopkins for 33 years. So he knows a lot of people. And the president of Hopkins was there and... The dean of the medical school, and uh, it was just wonderful. Um, in terms of you, you mentioned that sometimes people who are less arrogant have a better shot at <laughs> getting a Nobel Prize than people who are legends in their own mind. Yes, uh, when Greg was um, received the Lasker Award, which is uh, our highest award for ben- medical research. People in Johns Hopkins were looking for someone who was doing research quietly and not, you know, bragging about it. And uh, so they nominated Greg and he he received the Lasker Award. You know, it's interesting because some people who I've met over the years, the people who are really successful, who reach the top, are more modest than the people who are not that successful but act like they're big shots. Yes, yes. (laughs) Uh, You know, I was sort of thinking... Being a, a mother of somebody who won the Nobel Prize, um, you know, it, it takes a, you know, it takes a lot of work. And you know, could you tell us a little bit about your experiences um, as as a mother and your 
and you know the obstacles of bringing up a, a son who became so terrific well um i was a single mother mother for many years and of five children i have five and um it wasn't easy i was a teacher uh during that time i went to nyu for my masters and uh it was it was a difficult time but luckily i was young <laughs> I was able to do it. With five kids. Yes. <laughs> and are all your our children uh, uh, successes? Yes, they are. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what, can you tell us a little bit about your other children? Uh, sure. Uh, my, my daughter, Lori, works for the National Academy of Sciences, where her brother's a member, <laughs> and she's a project director. That means she's in charge of each project. Sometimes in the news you'll hear about a project from the National Academy of Science and, and what was decided. Well, that's what she does. And uh, my next daughter, Beth, is a botanical artist, and she's very creative. Um, my, the next child is my son, Matthew. He is a salesman for Kleinschmidt, and I always knew he would be a salesman. He, <laughs> he knew everybody on the block before I did. <laughs> and my youngest son, Paul, uh, lives in Silicon Valley, and he is um, now... Dean of uh, Engineering Management at Santa Clara University. You know, I'm sort of wondering uh, with siblings, is there any like rivalry or do you feel that were they a little like envious of, you know, a a brother who wins a Nobel Prize? And now, no, they're very proud of him. They were all very proud to be there. Everybody came. That's great. That's (laughs) another. uh, So what advice would you give to other parents for their kids you know what's the the key to being a success i think having high expectations always expect them to do the best um giving them chores to do i always told them you're part of the family and everybody has something to do I, i know nowadays that's not the in thing parents do everything for their children but i don't think i don't think that's so good were you strict with them? Yes. <laughs> so, so that's another lesson. You just can't look the other way. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, you know that is great. Um, so, as a single mother, um, bringing up, uh, you know, children, were you, were you, you were, you had a job at the same t- at the same time? Yes, I was teaching. So that's mm-hmm. a that, so that, so that must have made it really difficult. It was. Yes, I used to say to them. Don't give me any problems till I take my hat and coat off. <laughs> ah, that's uh, that's great. So we will be uh, right back. We have to take another break. And my guest is Kay Semenza, whose son Greg Semenza won the uh, the Nobel um, you know prize. And we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. I'm Paul Feiner. Now, back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor, and my guest is Kay Semenza, who lives in Tarrytown. And um, she um, brought up um, five uh, children as a single mother. And um, one recently won the Nobel Prize, and we're talking about her experiences um, um, as a mother and as um, a mother of somebody who became the best of the best, of, you know, in the in the world. Um, and I thought it was nice after your son won uh, the Nobel Prize. Um, uh, he inspired. He praised the teacher of yes. his. Um, for um, inspiring him, and I guess the teacher was um, was a Rose Rose Nelson. That's Nelson. right. Yes, and, Dr. Nelson. And why do you think you said you were you you also have been a teacher? Yes. And um, why do you think what qualities did she have that was so special? Well, he said that she made science come to life and made it so interesting. And she had um, a jelly bean jar, and she had jelly bean questions. So if you got them right, you got a jelly bean. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, 
So uh, so he must have gained a lot of weight. <laughs> no, he never gained weight. He's very thin. <laughs> um, so that so that's great. So she she tried figuring out like ways of motivating the, yes, the students. Uh-huh. Are, were there any other people in his class who became successes? There are people who became doctors. Yes, mm-hmm. but nobody won an award like the Nobel no. Prize or became <laughs> no. famous movie actors or actresses. I'm wondering. We touched on it briefly that after. Um, uh, your son won the Nobel Prize. You've been getting calls from people who you never heard of, and people are treating you maybe even nicer than than they did, uh, you know, before. Uh, you know, how has the Sleepy Hollow school system, you know, reacted? Are they going to have like a a plaque at the school uh, mentioning that your son is a Nobel Prize winner, and if students work hard, maybe they could be a, a prize winner also. I hope so. I haven't heard anything. They, they should. They sh- I mean, I think it's such a credit to a school district. It is, yes. And he, he gives the credit to his teacher, which is important. Does, it, does your son ever uh, come back to this area and just stop by? Um, well, he stops by on the way to Maine every summer. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so maybe... Maybe one of the things I should recommend to the school district is that they should have um, some sort of, like, entrance to, like, the lobby or they should have some dedication and and highlight the fact that, you know, your son did win a prize. And I think it's really important because a lot of people, they want to feel good about a school district and they want to feel that there's potential for their kids as well. And That's knowing true. about success stories, it's not only about making him feel good, but it's also about making parents and students feel great about their potential. Yes, it's also good for selling homes. Yeah, um, people want to go bring, uh, you know, go to a school district where it's it's recommended. So when I uh, get back to the office, I think I'm going to um, <laughs> write to the uh, school board and I'm going to say that they should. Um, recognize, um, uh, do something. I, I have suggested for the Greenberg Central School District because that's a school district that doesn't have as good a reputation as some of the other school districts, but there's people who are prominent um, who graduated the school district, and I thought they should have a wall of honor, and they should have like a list of all the famous people who graduated from the school, people who became successes, people who went to Ivy League schools, just so this way, parents, when they're thinking of uh, purchasing homes, you know, would consider that school district or would have more confidence in it. Good idea. Yeah. So that so now I have something to do when I <laughs> when I get back um, to uh, you know to the you know to the office. Um, in terms of um, um, you know the recommendations that you that you have did your uh, son always was he a big studier you know, oh yes was he, was uh, he- another thing when he was in junior high he used to come home right away he wanted to do his homework and i'd say to him you've been in school for six hours go out and play basketball but it was important for him to do his homework and did he, and he like, enjoyed it did he like sports as well um he played on the soccer team in high school and uh, was he good at in, in athletics or mainly like the nerd types that, <laughs> that, that wasn't as good? Well, he played. I mean, you didn't sit on the sidelines. And do you think that's also important for uh, students to have a balanced, you know, yes. life rather than just, you know, parents saying to their kids, you know, study, 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 lock yourself in a room and don't come out until you get into Harvard? <laughs> Well, he got into Harvard, but um, Harvard also wants uh, a well-rounded people. Um, so it was important that he was on the soccer team. Uh, so um, so in terms of his uh, college, uh, what schools did he go to? He After, went to Harvard. Harvard, Harvard and-, and then he went to, uh, then he received a, a full scholarship for six years from the National Institute of Health for a medical school. He went to University of Pennsylvania Medical School. Which was founded by Benjamin Franklin. Oh, that is, uh, that's, you know, that, that's great. Did he, you know, one of the, I was thinking of this while I was driving here. Um, when somebody wins a Nobel Prize or they're 
elected to a really prestigious office, you think that everything went right in their life. <laughs> and I'm wondering if your son had failures well, when or he, disappointments. When he first discovered, made his discovery, he uh, presented his results to a journal and they said it wasn't that important. So oh. <laughs> he went on to another journal and they printed it. And that's uh, how he got the Nobel And then he got the Nobel Prize? Well, that was 20 years ago. They oh, don't wow. give it right away. Oh, wow. They so, want to make sure that what you've done uh, is lasting. So he was basically rejected. Yes. And if he had given up, then he never would have gotten. That's right. He didn't give up. So the lesson is um, if people apply for jobs and they get rejected, they should actually try again. That's right. And, or or and, try another job. Or try another job. Right. Uh, did he have failures in uh, like high school or junior high school? I'm just trying to motivate people <laughs> who um, think their kids are, um, you know, they're disappointed in their kids. Oh, oh, you shouldn't be disappointed in your children. You should always you know, encourage them. Um, no, I don't think he did. And oh. and in terms of uh, your other, and you know, I think it's interesting because your other children have a whole variety of, of jobs. Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, maybe one of the lessons for parents is that, do you think parents sometimes try forcing, motivating or yes. encouraging too much their kids to go into the fields that they want to go into? Yes, definitely. I, I always told them they could do anything they want. So I shouldn't tell my daughter to uh, to uh, run for office <laughs> if she says she doesn't like like politics. <laughs> she doesn't like politics? She said she doesn't like it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, Encourage her to do whatever she likes. Yeah. How, as a mother, how did you help your kids find their passion in life? I mean, did they sort of find it on their own or did you basically um, well, encourage like some of your kids to go in this field or that field? No, or I, n- I never did. But, uh, well, actually, my daughter, Lori, she was going to college and she didn't know what to major in. And she had taken two languages in high school. And I said, why don't you major in, in French? You did very well. And she did. And she got into Georgetown School of Languages which is very prestigious, and uh, majored in French, ended up in the Peace Corps in West Africa. They don't send you to Paris. Oh, wow. (laughs) And uh, I went to visit her over there. And uh, so she was there for two years. Oh, that's great. So we will be right back. Uh, My guest is Kay uh, Semenza, and um, her son, uh, Dr. Greg Semenza, um, is a professor of medicine at John Hopkins, and he won the 2019 Nobel Prize in Medicine uh, or uh, Physiology. Um, and um, he shared it with uh, two other um, professors, other uh, scientists. I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor. Now back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg Town Supervisor, and my guest is um, Terry Towns, um, Kay Semenza, uh, whose son um, um, Greg uh, Semenza um, won uh, the Nobel uh, Prize in Medicine, uh, along with fellow um, scientists doctors William Kalin, of uh, junior of Harvard Medical School, and the Dana Farber Cancer Institute, and Peter. Radcliffe at the Francis uh, Crick Institute and Oxford University, and they were cited for their seminal work on how varying levels of oxygen affect cells, opening new ways to fight cancer and other diseases. So you should really be proud because your son is dealing with um, an issue that has impacted so many lives, and he is really making a difference. Yes, I'm very proud. Um, And you mentioned that he's more proud of his work than the Nobel Prize. Oh, yes. He's very interested. You know, I think uh, the week was wonderful, but he was anxious to get back back to work. (laughs) You know, know, that is. um, So it's sort of like a hobby and a job. (laughs) Yes, Um, it's his life. um, In terms of 
uh, you know, one of the things that's nice about you, you, you were a teacher uh, and you also um, I had a parent-child um, home program. Well, I worked uh, at the program after I retired for Can eight you tell years. us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, we, we took books and toys into uh, minority families' homes and uh, worked with the mother, sometimes the father. Um, we um, modeled how to use a book to increase vocabulary. Uh, the people spoke Spanish. The books were in Spanish. Um, I, I don't speak Spanish, but the, ch- the mothers could read them to the children. Yeah. And um, the program was studied, and uh, those who were in the program compared to the same group who were not in the program were much did much better in kindergarten because they knew the songs, they knew a lot of the words. Uh, vocabulary is important. That is, uh, yeah, that, and where is, is that organization based? Oh, it's at, at WJCS on Central Avenue. Oh, in Hartsdale. Yes, in Hartsdale. Um, yeah, I think WJCS does a fantastic job. I work with them on so many issues, and they've helped so many of my uh, constituents. I, I always refer a lot of problems to them, and then, of course, I take the credit when they get a result. <laughs> but uh, they they really are like amazing, and it's a not for profit that is really. Yes worth every uh you get real good value from that organization that's right uh have you uh from your experiences dealing with charities do you sort of are you skeptical that there's a lot of waste with some and you know others like wjcs really give value for your dollar yes i I try to give those to those that have the give the most to the people rather than the organization now with uh the with your um your son's um, uh, research, that's paid for by the by grants? Yes, you know, yes. Uh, I don't think you'll need any grants now. <laughs> right. And, and but, was part of his job getting the grants? Over oh, the, yes. Is that, like part of the, is that one of the frustrations of somebody who really wants to find a cure is you have to spend half your time raising the money? That's right. Or more than half the time? That's right. You have to write grants. And sometimes there is very little money from the government for science. And uh, that's what Greg is is encouraging. He's saying, you know, that basic science is so important that we put should put more money towards uh, uh, scientists. So does he do most of the all the research is with the with um, the the universities. He's works uh, with them rather than uh, doing research for biotech companies. Yes, yes. You know, he doesn't work with companies, no. But, you know, I I guess one of the reasons why drug costs are so high also is because they have so much, uh, you know, they you spend so much money on research and most of the, um, you know, the projects you're working on don't succeed. Yes, Uh, that's true. So so that's the thing. In terms of, uh, you were also a teacher. Yes. And you Mm -hmm. said a second grade teacher? Well, second grade for most of my career. And what advice, you know, what advice uh, do you give to other teachers? And, you know, how did you motivate your your students? And have you stayed in touch with any of the students that have, uh, were were former pupils? (laughs) Uh, no, I've, I've been retired for 25 years. Oh, so, so that's a, <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I think teachers nowadays know how to motivate. The problem is there's so much paperwork and so much testing that uh, it, it doesn't leave much time. And where were you a teacher? I was a teacher in Austin. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And the first and second grade is really, you know, a great year by the time you're in fourth grade. Um, it's not as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I started teaching fifth grade science, and that was difficult. <laughs> uh, in terms of all the complexities of uh, the work your your son does, is it, do you ha- understand all the the research? Like, do you read many of his? Um, oh no, re- <laughs> it's very difficult. You have to be a scientist to read it. Right. I have his books, but. Um, it's hard to They're just there. <laughs> so, um, but he is a very good teacher. 
one time he took out his laptop and he was showing his daughter and me. And I said, you are a good teacher. And when he gave his lecture at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, it was very, very clear. You mean something that the average person could really yes, understand, yes. Mm-hmm. which is really an, another, another another gift, gift that yes. you, know, you know that that he has. What do you think that uh, his next goals are going to be? Oh well, he's hoping. Um, I think to have a cure for kidney cancer. That is great. He said that he thinks that will be the first one to be cured. That is, uh, uh, you know, terrific. And how long? Do, does he think it will take between the time, you know, he, he said between, maybe three years. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so encouraging. <laughs> is he optimistic about uh, how the federal government is dealing with uh, finding a cure to cancer? You know, I was thinking the other day we're spending so much money on Afghanistan and, you know, we, we send people overseas and then, you know, we'll spend hundreds of millions or billions of dollars and then they'll turn against us after and if we put all that money into mm-hmm. cancer we might have had a cure by now that's right you yeah. know now he always says that that there should be more money spent for basic research yeah in fact i'm wondering why uh, the presidential candidates haven't really been focusing on that that's right they haven't mentioned science have they no <laughs> uh or even the congressional we have a congressional race and this is an issue that it's a quality of life issue that really impacts like everybody. That's right. The, mm-hmm. um, uh, so that is um, that is great. So we only have about another uh, two minutes left. And is there anything else that you could um, uh, think of or any advice for um, students? Um, you know, if, you, if a student is listening, um, you know, what what would you recommend that they do? If they want to be a success in life. Uh, Study hard. um, Go with your heart. Um, If you don't succeed, keep trying. And, uh, you know, I I think that I think that's probably the most uh, important, um, you know, lesson. I'm really pleased that you mentioned that your son's paper project got rejected because that's a really great, you know, great lesson. I have an intern program And I interviewed somebody who uh, won the Tony Award and I I asked him to meet with the interns and, you know, I emailed him on a Sunday and he stopped by on a Thursday. And like on Wednesday, he had dinner with the Clintons. And I said, why did you agree to meet with student interns in the summer? And he said, well, I want everybody to know that before I won the Tony Award, all my plays were rejected. And I appreciate the fact that you don't know. I want to let people know that you're not always going to be successful first time, the second time, the third time, but you never should give up. That's right. I think there's one more author who submitted his manuscript 30 times before it was accepted. That is great. That is a, <laughs> a terrific lesson. And if um, I go back to the office and people are yelling at me now, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> Now I'm not going to get discouraged. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, so that's great. I really Keep smiling. <laughs> definitely. I, I, and everything's a, a lesson. You know, I tell people when they're applying for jobs, every rejection is a success story because you should learn from it. That's right. And mm-hmm. if you keep, if you, if you don't give up and you learn from everything, it's all a process and eventually you'll, you'll be better. That's right. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for um, joining us. I'm um, Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor. And I will uh, speak to everybody um, next week, if not sooner. And you could always call me on my cell, 438-1343, um, anytime. Uh, thank you. Um, and I'll see you uh, soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you.